I think I wanted to get into something where I could affect change. Um, I'd been working in hospitality uh, in high school, towards the end of high school, uh, and I enjoyed that job, but it was the same thing day in, day out, and uh, you would complete your shift, you'd go home, you'd come back, and it would be exactly the same thing, and there was no long-term um, outcomes. Uh, and I realised that I wanted something where I could um, uh, go to work, um, affect change, uh, and create a, a bit of a legacy, and um, try and uh, assist people in their lives, um, but also just have a long-term um, long outcomes to what I was doing day to day. The, the culture at law school in the early 2000s was, uh, was really, really fantastic actually. Um, where the moot court is now uh, on the ground floor, that was a communal area and there was um, seating there. And uh, it was terrible uh, 1960s decor, uh, but it was our little area. And so there would be uh, people just milling around there all the time. Uh, and back in those days, you had to go and, and submit your uh, assignments in person in the, in the little pigeon box just in that area. Uh, and so that was a real community um, gathering point, um, particularly after having pulled all-nighters and going to uni at 8 o'clock in the morning and seeing everyone else with their bleary eyes. Uh, it, was, it was a great community. I think when I was at law school, uh, the, the LGBTI community was, was viewed fairly positively. Um, in the early 2000s, the, I guess the queer culture was becoming quite mainstream. And you had things like Queer Eye for the Straight Guy and those TV shows uh, that really promoted this, this view of, um, of uh, queer people being um, really uh, progressive, fun, exciting, that sort of thing. Uh, and I think, that I, I think that we benefited from that um, uh, in those days. For, for me, uni was a real eye-opening experience. Uh, I came out in the first year of uni and uh, I, was, I was 18. Uh, I'd, I'd left home um, starting a, um, new studies and uh, I was just able to, I guess, find myself in, in circumstances where um, the, you don't have those opportunities at high school. Um, so when I started, uh, I became involved in the gay club at uni uh, and ended up running it. Uh, and um, I really found that uni was uh, just a very liberating experience. Um, I did things like uh, bleach my hair, uh, had an earring in uh, for a while and uh, just really, um, uh, really found myself uh, during those years. Uh, I think that the law school uh, was, was a pretty supportive environment and there was that community feel amongst law students uh, and people uh, did know each other. Um, and I don't think that there was really too many problems with the, um, uh, with the queer community um, in law school uh, in those years. So when I finished uni, I did a clerkship at Tyndall Gas Bentley Lawyers uh, and I'm still here uh, yeah, 11 years later. So I, I came out at uni uh, and towards the end of uni, and I still had the, the bleached hair and the, uh, the ear piercing, um, I realised that to, uh, to come into the profession, um, I had to um, probably conform a little bit more. Uh, and so I, uh, I brought my hair back to natural colour uh, and I took the earring out uh, and bought myself a suit. Uh, and when I started working, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't out, um, but I wasn't hiding it either. It was just for the first year or so, I, I was just silent on the issue. I didn't. I didn't tell anyone um, that I was gay, but equally, um, if someone had asked me, I would have, I would have said there was, there was no issue there. Um, but I, I found that I was a bit reserved uh, in my dealings with people uh, in the firm uh, and clients and business contacts and other people in the profession. So after about a year or so, I, I realised that um, this wasn't the way to live, uh, and uh, that's when uh, I, I came out um, in the firm. Um, I guess I just didn't know what to expect. Um, I didn't realise at the time how many um, uh, gay people there are in the, in the legal profession. Um, there, there's quite a few in, in Adelaide, um, but I, I think that I just didn't really realise that. Uh, and so I was just a bit nervous and uh, at that stage there was uh, no other um, uh, queer identifying um, staff members uh, in the firm, uh, which has um, uh, certainly changed now. Um, and so I, I, I guess I was just unsure of what the future would hold, but uh, those fears uh, were very misplaced because there was absolutely no issue at all. When I came out in the profession, I don't think that I, I experienced any difficulties. Um, 
I, I think that the difficulties were probably internal, to be honest. Um, I, I had hesitated in coming out in the profession because I thought there might be an issue. Um, when I told um, the people in, uh, people in the firm um, and realised that there was no issue, uh, I realised I'd been beating myself up over it and there was no point in that. Um, and I, and I, I'm ha happy to say that since I've done that, um, I can't think of an example where I've had an issue with, uh, with anyone in the profession or any clients or anything like that. Um, it's a very supportive uh, profession. These days, there's no, there's no issue um, at all. So I wouldn't say I specifically need uh, support, uh, but equally I think that uh, I try and encourage uh, you know, people that work with me now um, who um, are gay, uh, I try and encourage them. So I think uh, since, uh, since I was at uni, uh, what I've noticed is that uh, equality or at least equality movement um, has in some respects gone from a top-down approach to a community-based approach. And what I mean by that is in the early 2000s, the Equal Opportunity legislation had been in existence for uh, 15, 20 years. Um, and I think at the time it was, um, well, the feeling was that it was government saying this is the way uh, it should work, employers shouldn't uh, discriminate because uh, that's, that's wrong from a government policy point of view. But I would say now that uh, the, the equality movement has moved on from that and it's not government saying this is the way it should happen, it's actually the community saying this is um, not how it should happen. Uh, and uh, at the moment, as the government still hasn't introduced things like marriage equality, it's actually the community that's, um, that's leaning on government to say things are um, things are behind the times um, with, as far as the law is concerned. So I, I, think, that, um, I think that things have, have definitely moved on and, and the rule of law and, and uh, issues like that have introduced notions of equality that uh, didn't really exist uh, before, at least uh, it was a government initiated response, whereas now it's definitely uh, community based. I think what I, I would like to have known when I was a student uh, is the depth of the um, queer identifying um, aspects of the profession in, in Adelaide. Um, I, didn't, I didn't really realise that and since uh, I've started working in the profession I realise that there's a lot of uh, um, a lot of queer people or uh, queer friendly people that are very uh, happy to uh, be contacted, to have a chat about. Um, I think in South Australia we've got a really good tradition of having a quite collegiate profession anyway. And I think that the, um, the queer uh, element of that uh, just adds another uh, dimension to things. Um, so uh, what I would say to students is that uh, there's absolutely no issue at all, you know, emailing uh, members of the uh, profession, getting on the phone um, and really reaching out because it is a very embracing uh, profession, especially with the, the queer community in the profession. Mm -hmm.